Hello! This tutorial is meant to provide you with basic instruction on the six CNC lathes that we have here in the shop. If your component is cylindrically symmetric, a lathe is probably the machine that you will use to manufacture it. The safety rules for the rest of the shop apply to the lathes as well. Always wear safety glasses and a hat when operating any machinery in the shop. However, there are a few additional precautions that need to be taken when operating a lathe. First, make sure there are no loose items on your body that can get caught in the machine. This includes items like watches, bracelets, necklaces, and especially hair. The lathe will be spinning very fast during manufacturing, and there are several protrusions on the lathe which can catch on hair and clothing. Never reach or lean into the work area when the machine is running. In addition, loading and unloading parts in the chuck requires using a small square wrench to tighten the jaws. Never, under any circumstances, leave this wrench in the chuck, not even for a moment. If the lathe is accidentally started while the wrench is in the chuck, the wrench will be flung out of the machine and could cause serious injury. These are just some of the main safety concerns with the lathe. There are others. Before using the lathe on your own, you will need to be trained by one of the shop staff. There are three main features located inside the lathe's workspace. The chuck, the carriage, and the tailstock. The chuck is used to hold the components in place during manufacturing. The carriage holds a single point tool and is moved around the component to achieve the desired shape. Lastly, the tailstock is used for drilling holes in the center of the part and for stabilizing long, thin parts during machining. The control panel for the lathe has six options, which can be accessed by pressing the mode button. Digital readout, or DRO, program, edit, setup, run, and program in out. For basic operation, the only mode you will need is DRO. The last five modes are used for programming the CNC functions of the lathe and will be covered in later tutorials. In DRO mode, the carriage can be moved with the control wheels on the front of the lathe. The left wheel controls the axial motion, the z-axis, while the right wheel controls the radial motion, the x-axis. Note that the value of the x position is always given as a diameter, not as a radius. So for every inch the carriage moves in the x direction, the value of the x position will change by 2 inches. This might seem counterintuitive, but since a diameter is much easier to measure than a radius, it will make the manufacturing process much easier. The carriage can also be moved rapidly with a jog handle between the wheels, but be careful not to run the tool into the chuck while jogging, and never jog when the tool is in contact with the workpiece. To turn the spindle on, press the forward button on the spindle control. The speed can be controlled with the spindle speed button. There are two ways to specify the spindle speed. Pressing ink set will specify a constant RPM, and pressing app set will specify a constant SFM. Constant RPM will spin the spindle at a constant number of revolutions per minute, no matter where the tool is. Constant SFM will adjust the RPM of the spindle depending on the tool's radial position to maintain a constant linear velocity of the tool relative to the surface of the material. This puts less stress on the tool and leaves a nicer finish. You can also adjust the speed that the carriage moves with a fine and coarse feed button. When the coarse feed option is selected, every turn of the handle will adjust the position by 0.8 inches. Selecting Fine Feed will reduce the feed to 0.2 inches. In DRO mode, there are some options to assist manual machining. The Go To lets you move rapidly from one position to another. Set the position by entering Go To mode, selecting the coordinate of interest, entering the desired value, and pressing Abset. Now, when the wheel or jog handle is engaged, the carriage will move up to, but not beyond, the set positions. Exiting out of this mode will negate this feature. Do 1 allows features like tapered angles and corner radii to be machined. When one of the Do 1 options is selected and specified, the Z and X wheels are disabled, and instead made to control the coarse and fine feed of the path specified by the Do 1 feature. Power feed can be used to move the carriage at a constant rate in one direction. The direction and distance of motion is specified with the ink key, while the speed can be set in inches per minute or inches per revolution with the feed speed arrows. Note that the machine door must be closed to engage the power feed, as it must be during any operation where the carriage will be moved under computer control. Go Home returns the machine to the home position, which can be set in the setup menu. Again, the machine door must be closed in order for this feature to function. 
Tool number allows you to switch between the various tools that you have programmed into the tool table. Since each tool has a different size, it will have different X and Z values for a given carriage position. We will cover more about this in the second part of this video. To load a component in the machine, open the jaws with the chuck wrench and place the component in the chuck. Then tighten the jaws about the part. If you are working with a small diameter component, you can use a collet to secure the part instead. Collets are available in standard sizes up to one inch in the drawers next to each lathe. To load a collet, align the groove in the collet threads with the alignment screw in the chuck. Then, while applying pressure to the collet, tighten the wrench until the threads catch. Insert your part into the collet and then tighten the chuck until the collet is secure. A quick way to zero the tool in either direction is to bring the tool near the part and then use a piece of paper to detect when the tool comes in contact. You can then set the X or Z position by pressing X or Z and entering the known value. This is a useful technique because it does not require any material to be removed from the part. However, if a truly accurate position is required, you will need to make a new cut in the component and measure its true dimensions. To do this, Turn the machine on and remove a small amount of material. Then back the tool off of the part without changing the dimensions you are trying to measure. Turn the spindle off and measure the true size of the cut which you have just made with a pair of micrometers. If you need help with this, see our tutorial on basic measurement. Enter the measured value of the new cut into the computer. Once you have zeroed your tool, you can use the control wheels, power feed, and the do one feature to machine a wide variety of shapes. For complicated shapes, however, it will be easier to program the machine to run a cycle. Cycles are what we will cover in part two of these tutorials.